What's up fellow creators, Mike Flex here at 7 Studios for Otoy and welcome back to part 2 of our Octane Render Quick Start where I'm going to walk you through installing Octane for each of the major DCCs since there are some unique elements to each process due to the vastly different architecture of each software. We're going to start with the standalone version of Octane which though it may not appear to be necessary if you're working inside of another package, there are a lot of benefits to having it there. Once you're signed into your account, you can click here on downloads or head directly to the forum. I highly suggest the latter if you want to see stuff like release notes and the most up-to-date experimental builds. If you're downloading from here, make sure to choose Studio or Enterprise depending on which license you purchased. You can use the lower drop-downs to refine this list even further. In most cases, you'll want the most recent stable build, but if you're not working on a major production and you want to explore all the newest features as they add them, experimental is the way to go. For that, you should check the forums often, and they have some handy links over on the right on this download page, which are definitely helpful because finding the correct subforum manually for standalone can be a bit frustrating. The first link will bring you to a subforum with the most recent stable releases, whereas the second link will bring you to the experimental ones, usually denotated as XB or RC for a release candidate, meaning it's very close to stable. Check the original post date below the thread title if you're unsure which one is newest. Obviously crashes can result working with experimental builds, so definitely save often and version your files if you don't want to lose your work. Reporting your crashes accurately in the bug reports subforum for each DCC by providing the log file can really help the team knock out bugs faster and get things stable, so never underestimate what your report could help with. Each release includes important notes about what was added or fixed and any things you should keep in mind such as minimum driver version or known issues. Located directly below these notes are the download links. Of course you'll want to download either Studio or Enterprise depending on which subscription you have and install normally like any other program. Upon first boot you'll sign in with your Otoy credentials if it's not an offline dongle license and bam we're up and running. Moving on to Cinema 4D, you can again choose from the list in Downloads, or you can hop directly to the Plugin Subforum by going Forum, Plugin Discussion Support, Maxon Cinema 4D, Releases, and up here in the Announcements. As of this recording, the most recent stable build is 2020.2.5, and the most recent experimental build is 2021.1RC1-R3. Once again, below the release notes, we have to choose either Studio or Enterprise, and once that's downloaded, you simply have to unzip the folder to your Cinema 40 Plugins folder, which is located here. Once you've dropped it in, be sure to dive inside of the Cinema 4D Octane folder and delete every CDL and XDL that is not relevant to your build, or you'll probably encounter weird behavior like hanging when closing Cinema. At this point, you can now launch Cinema 4D and it will ask for your Otoy sign-in credentials. Keep an eye out for an upcoming video on how to customize your UI for ease of use. Now we're taking a look at 3ds Max, which just like Cinema is as simple as downloading the build you want for the license you currently have from either the download page or the 3ds Max subforum located at Forum, Plugin Discussion, Support, Autodesk, 3ds Max, Releases. Again, pay close attention to version number and the date on the post to make sure you're looking at the most recent one. Choose Studio or Enterprise below the release notes. Then once it's downloaded, run the executable and let it know which versions of 3ds Max you want it installed with, and it will do the rest. Once the installation is complete, you can now start up 3ds Max, log in with your Otoy credentials. You'll see a new menu to the upper right and all the way at the bottom, a shortcut to swap your renderer over to Octane. You can do it manually or swap it back to another one by hitting F10 or by clicking this teapot with a yellow cog and selecting it from the list of renderers. Now onto Blender, which is currently a special combination of a local render server executable paired with a custom build of Blender compiled specifically for Octane. This is admittedly a bit cumbersome, and they're currently moving towards making it an add-on just like any other Blender plugin, so keep an eye out for that very soon. A good place to follow this stuff is in the Octane for Blender group on Facebook, which is very active. Link in the description. Again, we can go to Downloads and choose from the drop-down, or we can go Forum, Plugin Discussion Support, Blender, Releases. Worth noting, I believe this is the only major case where the studio builds are only accessible via the download page. If you're on an enterprise license, you can choose your preferred release number, scroll beneath those release notes, 
and download both Blender Octane Edition and Octane Server. Install the server first, and when you run it, it will appear as a tray icon that you right-click activate by signing in with your O2i credentials. This absolutely needs to be running in the background for Octane to work at all in Blender, at least until it becomes an add-on. Next, install the custom Blender build wherever you prefer, and when you run it, you first have to hop over to the Render Properties tab on the bottom right and switch your render engine over to Octane since both Cycles and Eevee are not supported in this build. The last thing to do is to switch the viewport shading over to rendered with the little circle on the upper right of the viewport. This will take a moment to initialize and you can turn off show overlays for a clean view. Blender is the only one that currently lets you have all this viewport stuff over the render itself, which can be really useful. Finally, we're gonna take a look at Houdini, which for many graphics professionals is like the final frontier, and the process of getting the plugin running is actually a good primer for the knowledge required to install other plugins for Houdini. Once again, you can grab the installer from downloads or going forum, plugin discussion support, Houdini releases. Download the proper zip for your license model, unzip to your documents, Houdini version number folder, being mindful of which build you have installed. I suggest renaming the folder Octane as I have here to keep things simple. Now, in that same documents folder, you'll find the all important Houdini.env, which you can edit with any text editor. Without getting technical, I'll save you the headache and say just copy and paste the following three lines from the video description, replacing username with your Windows login name. This, this, and this. Now save the file, close it, and you are clear to open Houdini and enter your Otoy credentials when asked. And voila. So that's it for this quick start tutorial series. In the next one, I'll introduce you to the commonalities and differences in interface for each DCC so you can easily migrate your learned skills from one package to the other if you so choose, and how you can use Octane Standalone in tandem with one of these DCC plugins to help you learn the software much faster. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.